Hello and welcome to Alhamarano Culture Unlimited. My name is Chase coming to you predetermined and pre-recorded from the Alhamarano studio. And in today's episode, we're going to look back at West Ham's dramatic late victory at Kidderminster Harriers. We're also going to cover their midweek win against Watford. And we're also going to dive deep into the Kurt Zuma situation. All this and more on today's episode of Alhamarano. So let's start with the FA Cup fixture against Kidderminster Harriers. The magic of the FA Cup. It's overkilled, it's oversaid, but let me tell you something, brother, it is real. Kidderminster, they scored um, within 20 minutes of the game, and that goal gave them confidence. And from there, they just grew in stature, they grew in confidence, and they were ready for it. They were up for a fight. So at half time, West Ham were a goal down, and this prompted the manager to make the West Ham manager to make a few changes. He took off Kral and Diop and brought on Deckers and Dawson. Well, it didn't quite have an immediate desired effect. You see, um, the game West Ham were chasing the game for a very long time, and literally, arguably the last kick of the game. Thank heavens, Declan Rice managed to find the net and he equalised, taking the game into added time. While the third verse was pretty much the same as the first verse and the second verse, where West Ham just failed to put Kidderminster to bed. And finally, 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 with arguably the last kick of the game, Jared Bowen managed to snatch the winner in injury time and added time. So it was like the 121st minute or something ridiculous like that. But thankfully he scored and this prevented the penalty shootout and prevented a huge upset for West Ham. So thankfully, West Ham went us through to the next round. Look, I just want to say, Kidderminster Harriers, they gave an outstanding account for themselves. Well, well done to them. They played their socks off, they howled the Premier League team, and I wish them all the best in the future. And hopefully, one year they can have their fairy tale FA Cup run. Good on you, Kitty. So that was Saturday. Let's jump forward now to Monday night or Tuesday morning. Um, basically, a video of Kurtzuma surfaced on social media, and in this video, there was footage of. Kurt abusing, kicking and shoving his pet cat. Look, I um, don't know where to start with this one. What person in their right mind abuses a defensive animal? And if that's not a stupid enough idea, who decides, oh, let's form this activity, and even dafter, let's put it on social media? I mean, none of this stuff makes any sense. So when I read this story on Tuesday morning, I was again completely baffled. And um, my first response was, I don't want this dude anywhere near West Ham. I don't want this guy at my club. Get him out of there. He couldn't leave West Ham fast enough. And I still feel that way. What I don't understand is the news broke Monday night, Tuesday morning, depending where you are in the world. Tuesday evening, Zumo's in the starting lineup against Watford. Has there ever been a more tone-deaf decision in world football? So understandably, this story has been all over the news, and what we do know now is that Zuma has been fined £250,000, which I believe is about two weeks' wages for the player, um, by West Ham. Also, it's important to notice West Ham won't be pocketing this money. This is going as a, um, a donation or it's going to some charity. I'm not too sure which one. I should have done my homework but um, the player has been fined £250,000. We also understand that Zuma's cat has been confiscated, has been taken away by the RSPCA. And um, right now, I think it's just a rumor or murmurs, but there is talk that um, Zuma will be missing the following West Ham fixture against Leicester. A very key interesting point about this whole thing is that um, in the video, uh, it didn't just feature Kurt, it also featured um, Jan Zuma, who is Kurt's younger brother. And, um, Johan currently plays for Dagenham and Redbridge. They are a few divisions below West Ham. And um, basically the club has suspended Johan until further investigation. And I commend them on that. And again, we've seen this at a smaller level. However, a Premier League club like West Ham, they, don't, they can't find the logic or they can't read the room to realize, wait, let's not start this player. And the really sad thing about this is West Ham vs Watford was meant to be a tribute to young Isla. Now for those of you who don't know, Isla was a young West Ham fan um, who sadly lost her battle against cancer and she recently passed away. And now this fixture, West Ham Watford, was meant to be a tribute to Isla. All the players had pink armbands on and there was a moment um, before kickoff in Isla's memory in honour of Isla. And the thing is, because of West Ham's failure to read the room, because West Ham couldn't put an expensive player aside and suspend him, people aren't talking about that. People are talking about 
Zuma. And every time he touched the ball, every time Kazuma got the ball, he was greeted to a chorus of boos. I mean, he meant to have a tribute, and it ends up being what, like, like a wrestling show where you boo the hill. Everyone's just completely booing him, and it just left a very sad, bad taste in my mouth. And for once, I was really embarrassed to be a West Ham fan. Look, if I had my way, I'd have Zuma at the club. But if they, if they want to hold on to Kurt Zuma, if they don't want to sack him, if they don't want to sever the ties or end the relationship, then I want to see real remorse from the player. Yes, he issued an apology, but anyone can say sorry. Baby, I changed, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's not going to cut it. These guys earn a whack of money. What's stopping him from using this money and sponsoring a vet student, or maybe five or ten vet students? What's stopping Kurt Zuma from becoming an activist now? If you say sorry, then show me your remorse. Repent and just show me you take this stuff seriously. I want to see him volunteer at a shelter. Not for a week or a weekend, but I want to see a radical change in Kurt's behavior. If he's serious about it, if he really is sorry, we will see change. Abusive behavior, there's no excuse for any abusive behavior in society. And if West Ham are going to keep Kurt Zuma, I want to see an impact now. I want to see difference, I want to see change. And another interesting aspect about this all is, how does this affect the other players in the squad? I don't know about you, but if it was me, and if one, if one of my teammates, if one of my colleagues, that came out that they abused someone or an animal or anything, or just displayed abusive behavior, that wouldn't sit well with me. I'd feel very uncomfortable being in the same locker room as that player. As a team, you're a community, you're a unit, you're united. And now you've got someone in your club, someone on your team, who represents the same badge as you, doing this stuff, it doesn't speak well for the club at all. And the real sad thing is, what message does this send to impressionable youth and kids out there? What message does this send to other footballers? Does it say that footballers are above the law, they can do what they want? So next up for West Ham, it's a trip to Leicester City. The last time these clubs met early in the season, West Ham won 4-1. To be honest, I'm struggling to get hyped for this one. It's, it's such an exciting season for West Ham fans and for West Ham in general. But this Zuma incident really puts a, a damper on everything. And you know, the quicker this is sorted out, the better. We can move on, we can go forward. It looks like he's gonna stay at the club. Not my choice, not my, not how I would have wanted it. But again, if they're gonna keep him, there needs to be action and West Ham need to show their intent and to be taken seriously. Because right now, this whole incident doesn't do the club favors with how they dealt with it. And it looks like we are now out of time. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to Amarano. Until next time, come on, you irons.